Oregon man who started wildfires ends up tied to tree by locals. Tied him to a tree. Yep, we did. That bastard over there, he started to start a forest fire. Big federal forest, you know how that goes. Not good. You know, you always see those stories of 30,000 acres and raging forest fire encroaching on homes. Well, here you got this guy. He's starting a forest fire. And the locals, and this is uh, this is in the backwoods, literally in the backwoods of Oregon. South southern southwest Oregon. You got some you got some folks there that are gonna take matters into their own hands. I'm surprised they only just tied him to a tree. Yeah. Justice is served. We're gonna tie you to a tree and we're gonna let you cool your jets there until the sheriff arrives. He's gonna handle this moving forward. Wild, right? Pretty funny storyline. Oregon man who started wildfires ends up being tied to tree by locals. A man who reportedly ignited wildfires in a remote forested corner of Oregon, southwest corner of Oregon, was apprehended by three local residents and tied to a tree until the police arrived. That's wild. I think, okay, yeah, you're not doing that anymore. Not here in our forest. How'd they catch him? Federal, state, and county authorities responded to a radio call Monday from a U.S. Bureau of Land Management employee who reported a man was walking along a gravel road and setting fires. That guy should be more than tied to a tree, right? Tall tree, short rope. Yeah. Well, anyway. Uh, <laughs> so he was walking along a gravel road and setting fires in the forest some 25 miles northwest of Grants Pass. So you are, you're in the mountains. You are not, I think, in the foothills. You are, you're pretty close to the mountain pass. 25 miles northwest. Ground crews, assisted by local residents, and three helicopters quickly got the two fires under control, Curry County Sheriff John Ward said. Meanwhile, three local residents located the suspect walking on the road near the fires and detained him. Hey, you, stop right there. Let's see that tree over there. Let's tie him to that tree. Wait till the Wait till the uh, wait till the sheriff comes. It was reported that the suspect became very combative with the three residents and had to be tied to a tree to, to subdue him. This is Oregon. This is um, this is not Portland, Oregon. Let's make that clear. I think a lot of people think all of Oregon and all of Washington are and in all of California are certain ways. You get in the outback of Oregon, you get in the outback of Washington, you're not going to see a lot of Biden signs. Let's just put it that way. You're going to, it's Trump city. It's Trump city. And you get this kind of thing. Yeah, they're lucky they just tied him to a tree. It gets serious. Everybody carries a gun because, you know, police station might be 45 miles away. You got to take care of business on your own. A lot of Oregon is like that. It's just most of the stories I read. We're talking about Portland, and you just got a bunch of knuckleheads running around with blue hair, and you know, just so so stupid. So, an ambulance crew was asked to respond due to some injuries that the suspect apparently received from falling down. Hmm. What happened to you? You got a black eye. Ah, he, he he fell down. He fell down, and he hit his eye on a rock. Yeah and, every, yeah, and those three guys, these three guys were like, he fell down. Uh-huh. That's the story. He fell down. He injured himself falling down. This is after we apprehended him for trying to burn down our forest. After being treated at a hospital for his injuries, Trennan Smith, 30, of Veneta, Oregon, was being held on Tuesday in the Curry County Jail. You've never heard of these areas, have you? No. Because I haven't either. I had to look it up on a map. And I'm like, okay, I have clearly... I don't know if I've been through Grants Pass, but I've heard of Grants Pass, and I, I know kind of roughly where it is, but I have not heard of it. I've never had an occasion, I don't think. Um, it's not near any of the mountains down there. That um, It's not near Mount Hood. Ward said, county uh, court documents did not say if he has an attorney. Bond was set at $10,000, right, so or 100000 so he's going to have to bond out with ten grand. If you're walking along... 
some obscure forest road. It's probably really dry and dusty. You're just walking around setting fires. I'm going to go out on a limb. See the whole tree thing there? Yep. I'm going to go out on a limb and say, this dude doesn't have the 10 grand to bond out, right? So let's let him cool his jets in jail for a while. Plus, it is the f- high fire season. This is not the time to be setting forest fires. Again, tall tree, short rope, things handled. The area where the fires occurred is only accessible either by the Rogue River or Forest Service and BLM roads. And that is not Black Lives Matter. That is uh, Bureau of Land Management roads. Lodges are nearby in the remote region used by rafters and fishermen. So you're out in the dingles. You're out in just crazy land. Anything could happen out there. I remember my father-in-law who passed away in 2001, I think. He told a story. He was always out. He was way out in Eastern Oregon hunting. Uh, he'd get up a, uh, a tag for elk or whatever. And he, he was in some of these counties. You're just like, oh, yeah, I hope you make it back out of it. It was a hunter, though. He's running around with a you know, big 30 odd six or a seven millimeter rifle and they're, you know, shooting stuff. So th- he came across, um, one of the random like mass murderers that was known to frequent Eastern Oregon at one time, he told a story of they were way out somewhere elk hunting. It was super cold. It was snowing. And they came across this kid and they're like, this is a really weird story. Like, and this kid was on the run. I can't remember the name of that story, but if you're in Oregon, you'd know that. And my father-in-law was pretty convinced that this killer was who they came across in like a, a, a camping setting where they were getting ready to do some hunting one morning and this kid came along and he had a backpack on and he didn't really know what he was doing. But he was hanging out in eastern Oregon because you could kind of disappear there. That's, um, you know, you can also die there too because it's pretty, you get far enough out, you're in the woods, you're on your own. There's not much out there. The quick actions on getting the fires out most certainly averted a catastrophe and saved lives. It's wild. If the fires had not been contained and if they got out of control, they could have blocked all the residents and visitors from having an escape route because you got like one road in and one road out. Same road, right? A bunch of trees come down. Those folks are hosed. So this nut job fell down. Injuries from falling down. That's great. That's a great part of the story. All right. That's about all I got on this one. But Good for those three individuals. Good for Oregon for catching somebody. And it sounds like he's going to face some justice. How much time do you get for trying to set forest fires? Is that a federal offense? Is he in a federal forest? Can't really tell by this story. Don't know where it happened. But hopefully he gets some time to cool his jets and think about making better decisions than lighting forests on fire. Smokey Bear says, don't do it. Just don't do it. We don't need any more forest fires. It's supposed to be like 95 here today in, in uh, Bellevue. Everybody else in the United States would be like, God, we take that in a heartbeat. 95. Got somebody in uh, Yakima. You know who you are. Texted me the other day. 110 here. I'm like, oh, geez, that is, yeah, that's, that's hot. My dad texted me the other day. 111 here in Oklahoma City. I'm like, well, yeah. All right. So you got really hot weather and you got some, <laughs> got some tornadoes in the winter. All's good. Or is that spring? Can't remember when the tornado season, I think it is spring, but um, yeah, all throughout the United States, you've got some wild weather going on. Forest fires, not good. Here in Seattle, we're bitching about being in the nineties after nine plus months of rain and gloom. Now we're bitching about, you know, oh, it's too hot. I don't have AC in my house. And that is one of the things here in, in Western Washington. I think only 40%, and I think that is a really, really high estimate. 40% of the homes have AC because uh, over 35 years of appraising homes, I only ever came across a handful that had like dedicated heat pump or dedicated AC that worked. And yeah, it, there's a box on the appraisal form, or there was a box in the appraisal form where you had to indicate air conditioner, heat pump, central, and then what indicate, you know, what impact on value that had. And here in West, Western Washington, it has the big zero impact because there's like four days a year where you actually really need air conditioning. 
I do have a, uh, air conditioning unit and I have run it. I think we've run it five days this year because we just don't need it. And most of the days we don't need it because it cools down at night. But, you know, people set in forest fires, throw them in jail. That's not cool. That is nowhere even remotely close to reasonable. I'm going to leave you with that thought. Thanks for being here. We'll catch up soon on the next one. Bye for now. <laughs>